Uh, okay, uh, thanks for the introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Dong Hui Dai, and I am a second year PhD student from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Uh, it is my great honor to be here to give an introduction about our work, inducing wireless charger to voice out for inaudible command attacks. This work is collaborated with Dr. Zheng Ling An and my supervisor, Dr. Rui Yang. Okay, uh, let's move on. As we all know recently, the AI-powered voice assistants like Apple Siri, Google Assistant, or Huawei Serena has already been deployed on our smartphone. However, these voice assistants are not always safe according to previous research. As so in this table, there's many privacy-sensitive tasks are available for voice assistant, even when the screen is locked. For example, the adversary could ask Apple Siri to make a phone call, send, me, send message or read message, or even get a location information directory. This table demonstrates that the lock screen cannot safeguard again voice attack. Based on this security threat, many relevant research has been proposed to inject in order voice to a voice assistant. The most popular one is use the ultrasound to uh, input the voice. However, this kind of attack has weak techniques because it requires an active transceiver and an extra power source. The second kind of attack is use razor to inject the voice. However, as we all know, the razor device is, is expensive and you need perfect alignment and active transceiver to start the attack. The final kind of attack is use ENI to inject the voice, but as you all know, the propagation of electromagnetic wave cannot be precisely controlled. In addition, this kind of attack still needs an active transceiver, and it already been safeguarded by the manufacturer of smartphone. Therefore, uh, we need a new kind of attack which has this advantage, like strong steel snakes, low cost, no alignment requirement, and no extra transceiver. Our vision for developing a new kind of attack comes from the observation that currently the wireless charger are becoming public facilities everywhere. Could the wireless charger be utilized to inject the inaudible command attacks to voice assistant? The answer is yes. Our work is focusing on inducing wireless charger to voice out for uh, attacks. Okay, the question is, why the wireless charger could have an impact on voice assistant. This is because the magnetic leakage from charging signal. The left-hand side figure shows the X-ray image of two written devices, and the right-hand side figure shows the simulated magnetic field distribution while these two devices are enjoying charging. And we can see that microphones on these two devices are fully exposed to strong magne magnetic field. Our vision is to modulate voice into such a charging magnetic field. This figure shows the internal structure of a commercial microphone. According to Maxwell's equation, if we impose a changing magnetic field, or we can call it magnetic interference, it, could, it would induce a voice current signal in the analog light inside the microphone. Oh, this is our vision. And we first conduct a preliminary experiment to verify our vision. We use signal generator and wireless charger coil to mock wireless charging's magnetic field. And then we use a microphone to record the magnetic voice. Uh, the spectrogram of the magnetic voice can be shown on the right-hand side figure. And, and our conclusion is that the magnetic inductive voice spectrogram resembles the original one's pattern. Okay, therefore we propose our work. We call it MaxOut. It could inject inaudible voice command attacks into a smart device's microphone from a wireless charger's magnetic field. Okay, the first case of our attack is when wireless charger can be hacked directly. We call this kind of attack hardware attack. In this kind of attack, we directly use the wireless charger's charging coil to generate a moderated voice uh, magnetic field. Uh, this kind of attack is intrusive. And the second case of our attack is when wireless chargers cannot be hacked because it already been deployed on public basics. Uh, we call this kind of attack parasite attack. In this kind of attack, we just need to ad adhere a parasite label to the top of the wireless charger to generate the miraculous magnetic field. Okay, this kind of attack is non-intrusive. Before introducing the design of our attack, I will first show a very simple demo video to show how our attack works. 
Okay, this is an overview of attack. Okay, uh, this is the hardware attack. Uh, this is the parasite attack. What do you want to say? Your message to your husband says transfer money. Okay, uh, next I will introduce the design of the hardware attack when wise chargers can be hacked directly. Uh, first, we need to take a look on the wireless charging in advance. This figure shows the architecture of a wireless charger. Uh, we can see that typically a wireless charger has no internal DAC module. It means that we could only control the on-off status of these four switches. And our second finding is that the charging frequency typically locates at 100 to 200 kilohertz, which is far greater than human voice. Okay, the first challenge for hardware attack is how to generate an analog voice by controlling the switches on off status on wireless charger's digital MCU. Our solution is to use a uh, post voice modulation, or we can call it PWM scheme, to emulate the analog voice. Uh, PWM is a very powerful scheme. Uh, it could emulate any analog signal by adjusting the digital output's duty cycle. This scheme could perfectly solve this challenge because most MCU in wireless charger allow uh, support PWM function. The right hand side figure shows that the PWM modulated signal may taste the fidelity of the original signal on the receiver side. Okay. The second challenge for how our attack is how to down convert the demodulated voice on the microphone because of the frequency gap I mentioned above. Our solution is to uh, demodulate voice signal directly via microphone amplifier's nonlinear effect. Suppose the input signal of the microphone is as input, which will contain two frequency, F1 and F2. And then after the output signal of the microphone will contain two terms, the linear term and nonlinear term. After a series of ch mathematical transformation, finally we will get the down-converted term with a frequency lower equals to F1 minus F2. Uh, for more detail about the uh, down conversion per sex, uh, you can reference to our paper, okay? Finally, let, let us review the system, well, system workflow of hardware attack. First, the hardware should take control of wireless charges MCU. And then the hacked MCU should create a PWM emirated voice command. And third, the coils should, should transmit their moderated voice signal via magnetic field. And finally, uh, at the microphone side, the voice should be automatically demodulated. Okay, this is the uh, system workflow of hardware attack. Next, I will introduce the design of parasite attack. Actually, parasite attack is deployed when wireless chargers cannot be hacked. In this, such a case, we could directly place a parasite above the wireless charger. What is parasite? Parasite is a battery-free label. It is very small, compact, and not eye-catching. And typically, if you contain one inner ice coils and multiple outer TS coils, as shown on in the left-hand side figure. And typically, it is placed between a wireless charger and a smartphone, as shown in the right-hand side figure. Okay, the first challenge for parasite attack is how to wireless, wirelessly charge the passive parasite label. Our solution is to steal the power directly from the hoster wireless charger, as shown in uh, this figure by using an AC to DC to AC converter. Okay, the second challenge is how to precisely inject the voice without knowing the orientation of victim devices. Uh, we design a flower pedal shaped TX array as shown in these two figures. By using this array, the parasite could always fire a closed TX coil right be placed right below the microphone regardless of device's orientation. Okay, next I will introduce the implementation and evaluation of our attack. 
uh, we use a rise charge development kit to evaluate how wrong attack, and we use a customer design PCB board to evaluate the parasite attack. Typically, a parasite label costs about 15 US dollar. Okay, uh, this figure shows the feasibility result of our attack. The conclusion is that the injected voice was successfully recognized in 91% of cases. And this figure shows the impact of charging power. We can see that the recognition rate increases as the charging power is increased. And this table shows the impact of environment noise. Our observation is that both attacks perform well in different scenarios except at the bus because the noise level at bus is larger than 70 dBA. Okay, uh, now I've introduced the countermeasure part. How to mitigate the proposed attack? The first measure is to upgrade microphone hardware. And the second measure is to develop abnormal voice detection algorithm from software level. And the third measure is to disable microphone while charging from the smartphone manufacturer's uh, level. And the final method is to set limitation on charging power from the uh, wireless charger's manufacturer's level. Okay. Now I will give a conclusion about our work. We first demonstrate that magnetic interference is a practical select to microphone system. And we are first manipulate wireless charger to inject miraculous voice command into commercial devices. And we propose two different attack and well evaluate them with extensive experiments. Okay, thank you for listening. Hello. Uh, you said that during charging and disabling the voice detection helps against your attacks. But um, does it also help with the parasitic attack? Because this seems to directly influence the microphone and not the charging circuit. Uh, you, you mean the parasite attack will have an impact on the microphone but not charging? Actually, the parasite always steal about 1% of power from the wireless charger, and the remaining 99% uh, of power will stay be charged by the uh, written devices. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Hi, great talk. i just wondering about this anti-leasing filtering you used to downsample from this inaudible frequency to the audible frequency. It's yeah. like a general approach that works on across all um, smartphones because it's like a fixed anti-leasing filter in all smartphones, or is there some variety between different devices? Uh, yes, actually this, this property has already been uh, as proposed in many years ago. This property can be applied in almost all the microphones uh, nowadays we are used. So, uh, we can directly moderate our voice to the charging signal. Okay, yeah, thank okay. you. Okay. I have one question, if possible. Uh. So you have to, the, the charger has to be in contact with the phone, right? So can this be run at a distance? Like, can you modulate the magnetic field at a distance? Because the other attacks you criticized at the beginning, the laser one, the inaudible one, the um, ultrasound one, can be run from a distance, yeah. right? But not this yeah. one. Yeah, actually, our attack can only be worked on. Uh, shorter than five centimeters, so the distance is very short. But but we think that in wireless charging, typically your smartphone has placed right above the wireless charger. So I think distance is not the thing we are considering in this work. Yeah, but that limits the attacker to the wireless charge. They cannot run the attack from a distance. Huh? Uh, so sorry. Uh, they cannot run the attack from a distance. Yeah, yes. Yeah. If the phone has been placed a little far, yeah. and then the attack, attack cannot work. And when the phone is locked, does it recognize voice commands? Sorry, I didn't If the catch. phone is locked, like the screen is locked, does it recognize voice commands? Usually it doesn't. Uh, yes, if, if the phone is locked, uh, the smartphone still, the voice assistant still can be wake up if you set it to be wake up when locked. Okay. Okay, cool. One okay, more thank you. Well, one more question from Daniel. Over Hi, uh, Daniel Genkin, Georgia Tech. Thanks for the great talk. Uh, what is the limiting factor in terms of frequencies for doing this at a distance? Like, what stops an attacker from plus 30 dBm at uh, whatever the PWM frequency is and having the um, uh, QI charger receiving uh, coil respond? Uh, you, you mean the impact of the PWM frequency? Why can't you transmit 
at way of outside specs of a wireless charging just to increase distance? Uh, actually, we, we have a, a we, we just used the wireless charging frequencies to modulate the voice. We haven't passed the, we haven't uh, wired the charging protocol because uh, because we just modulate our low frequency voice to the high frequency charging. I signal. understand. I'm asking why not to violate the frequency the, the, the protocol in order to get more distance. Because they don't want to. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.